All right, everybody, hello and welcome. This video is going to be a brand new set of questions for the A plus 1101 exam. We are going to look at one question from every single exam objective. One from one, one from two, one from three, one from four, one, one from five. We're gonna look at one from every single one. It's a quick quiz just to roughly see where you're at. One of those quick ones where you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, I wonder if I'm ready for the exam. This might give you a rough idea. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. On the screen here, we have the practice exams. And because we want to break it down by exam objective, we are going to scroll down and click on questions by exam objective. Click on one. Now, we've got a lot here. I'm just going to scroll through and pick one at random. Well, it's not really random. I've kind of pre-selected one. Um, but as far as you know, it's at random. So I'm going to go to the slides that I've prepared. And we're going to go to slideshow, open it up. And have a look at our first question. So the question reads, exam objective one, you have recently acquired a new Windows mobile device and are exploring the various ways to connect it with other devices. What types of wired connections can you use? A, USB-C and USB-A, B, Lightning and USB-A, C, Serial and NFC, D, Bluetooth and Hotspot. Your answer is coming in three, two, one. The answer is USB C and USB A. So there's a brief description on these slides, as you can see now, if you're watching this. If you're listening to this, that's okay. I'm going to talk us through it. I want us to go back and just have a look at this question and, and look at the key components that would have helped us answer this correctly. So as you read through a question, you want to try to pick up on the key pieces of information. You've recently acquired a new Windows right there. Windows, it's specifying a brand. It's specifying a, a type of device, right? It's not Apple, it's Windows. So immediately, if we know anything about cables, we should know that if it's Windows, that eliminates the lightning cable. There's going to be no lightning cable because that is Apple proprietary. So we already should be thinking that in our minds. So it's Windows mobile device. It's mobile. It's something we take on the move. Okay, that's probably also important. Uh, and uh, exploring the various ways to connect it with other devices. What types of wired connections? Wired connections. It's specified wired connections. This is simply a matter of reading the question properly, can you use? So it's Windows, which means no lightning or Apple pr proprietary technology, and they want wired connections, which means no wireless connection. So immediately, okay, um, could it be USB-C? Yes, um, nothing proprietary about that, and that's a wired connection. USB-A, that's wired, yes. Could it be lightning? No, because lightning is Apple. We know this is a Windows device, absolutely not. It cannot be lightning, so that rules be out. Serial and NFC. You might be able to connect through serial if you've got some sort of adapter, but NFC is not a method of connection. That is near field communication, very quick data transfer. You cannot connect um, that to another device with that technology. And finally, Bluetooth and hotspot, they are not wired, they are wireless. So that's ruled out as well. We've read the question correctly. And as a result of potentially nothing more than process of elimination, the A is the only answer that could possibly be there. Here's a brief explanation of the incorrect answers if you did want to go through that. So feel free to pause the video and read that if you want, but we're going to be moving on. So from here, we want to go to, to exam objective two. So we'd come back up. We go to questions by exam objective, click on two. I'm going to scroll through, but it's not actually random. I'm not actually going to randomly select one because I've already chosen one for you. I just want to show you what the process would be like if you did get those practice exams for yourself. Now, let's look at this question for exam objective two. Which of the following options correctly matches the transport protocol to its associated applications and describes its characteristics? Oh boy, that's a lot of words. A, UDP, that is used for SSH and ensures reliable data transfer. 
B. TCP, used for TFTP and optimizes streaming performance. C. TCP, used for HTTPS and ensures secure data transfer. D. UDP, used for DHCP and optimizes streaming performance. Or E. UDP, used for FTP and ensures secure data transfer. That was a lot of words. I'll give you a few moments to think about that one. And your answer is coming up in three, two, one. The correct answer is TCP, used for HTTPS and ensures secure data transfer. And you have a brief explanation of that on your screen, but for this question, you essentially need to know the difference between TCP and UDP. TCP establishes a connection. It is a secure connection. It goes through that hand, handshake process, making sure that the other side has received every single piece of data before sending the next one. That's why it's secure. It's safe. UDP, it, they don't check if the other side has received the data. They just keep sending it. They're just lobbing that data over, which is good if you want to stream things because you don't want to keep stop and buffering to make sure the data has been um, checked. You just maybe you might have to skip a couple of frames. UDP is great for real-time voice or video calls, streaming Netflix, things to that effect. TCP is safe and secure. So that's one thing you had to know. If we go back and have a look at the question, you also had to know these acronyms. You need to know what SSH means because uh, SSH is secure shell. You wouldn't use secure shell with UDP because you'd want to make sure that it is reliable and safe. And UDP is not reliable and safe. There's no handshake created. It just lobs that data. So, of course, you need to know the difference between TCP and UDP, and you need to know what each of these acronyms mean. So that correct answer, TCP, is used for HTTPS and ensures secure data transfer. Absolutely. You establish a secure connection with TCP. HTTPS is secure web browsing. That matches up. And then you're ensuring that secure data transfer. 100% that is the one. So... Here is an explanation of the incorrect answers on your screen now. Feel free to pause and have a read of those if you feel like that's something you need to do. Otherwise, we're going to keep this ball rolling. So you would now go back to the top, click on exam objective three, look at a question that you want to try to answer. I've chosen this question right here, and it reads, you have been tasked with configuring a high performance server for a client with a substantial budget. The client places a strong emphasis on achieving optimal data performance and ensuring high data redundancy for their critical applications. Considering these requirements, which RAID configuration would be the most suitable choice? A. RAID 0 B. RAID 1 C. RAID 5 or D. RAID 10 Your answer coming up in three, two, one. The correct answer is RAID 10. So there's, there's a brief description of what the different RAIDs mean on your screen now. I'm not going to go through specifically what the difference is between RAID 0, 1, etc. right now uh, because I don't want this video go, to go for too long. But again, think about the key components we want to take in as we read this question. You have been tasked with configuring a high performance. It's a high performance server for a client with a substantial budget. They can spend a lot of money. So we don't need to worry about trying to be tight on the budget. The client places a strong emphasis on achieving optimal data performance and ensuring high data redundancy. So we want good performance and redundancy. We need to have both of those things and they have no budget, really. They have a huge budget. So that's going to tell us the kind of information we need to make a decision on this. So with that information alone, we should be able to immediately know which one of these options is correct, assuming you know the difference between RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 10. If you don't, you need to go study that, potentially with my learning guide.
or practice exams that you can get at journeydesiber.com. Okay, enough plugging. Let's move on. There's a uh, nope, there's no description of incorrect answers there because they're all pretty well described there, I think. So next one, is it the next last one? Second last one, exam objective four reads, you are a developer working on a project that requires testing code changes without affecting your production environment. Which virtualization approach would be ideal for this scenario? A, legacy software virtualization. B, cross-platform virtualization, C, application virtualization, or D, sandbox environment. And the answer is D, sandbox environment. So let's go, I'll, I'll read out that answer briefly or the explanation. A sandbox environment provides a controlled and isolated testing environment where you can experiment with code changes without impacting the production environment. So you want a place where you can experiment, but if you mess up and, and you change the code and all of a sudden you've accidentally uh, put in a code that when someone clicks it, they're going to get go to a website and get rickrolled and you can't figure out how to reverse it and it's stuck and everything's messed up. You don't want that to actually affect your real project. You want to put that in a little cage and say, oh, crap, I messed up. Delete. Create a new environment. Start again. Start testing. Right? So there's no real risk. So legacy software virtualization. Have I put these in? Yes. I've put in what the incorrect answers mean here. Uh, so you can pause the video and look at that if you want to. But first... We're going to have a look at this question. So you're a developer working on a project that requires testing code changes without affecting your production environment. So that's the key piece of information. You want something where you can test without affecting your production environment. The purpose is to test and you want it to be isolated from your overall production environment. Sandbox uh, is what's going to be able to do that for you. So just again, pause the video if you want to have a look at the details for the incorrect answers here and We'll head on to the final exam objective. Let's go. Exam objective five. This is the one everyone struggles with. This is the really complicated one. Troubleshooting. But I think this question is pretty easy in comparison to what you sometimes get. You do get a lot of easy questions. You could get some harder ones. I think this is one of the easier ones. Now, let's take a look. The question reads... Your computer monitor displays a constant flashing or flickering image. What could be a probable cause of this issue? A. The monitor's brightness settings are too low. B. The monitor has a dead pixel. C. The HDMI cable is not properly connected. Or D. The monitor's audio settings are misconfigured. I hope you already have that answer. I'm not even going to waste any more of our time because I'm sure you got it. The correct answer is C. The HDMI cable is not properly connected. A flashing or flickering image on a monitor is often due to a loose or damaged HDMI cable. Ensuring that the cable is properly connected can help eliminate this issue. So again, guys, uh, in order to know this, you, you'll basically need to know each possible issue that you could occur and what is most likely to be causing those issues. And the only way to do that is to study potentially using my learning guide or practice exams at journeytosuper.com. Also, Professor Mess's free YouTube um, series is great. Get my learning guide, watch Professor Mess's free YouTube series. Those two go perfectly hand in hand when you're done. Get my practice exams, which is what this is taken from. And you're sweet, guys. You're going to absolutely smash it. You can't fail with that combination. It's a total cost of 35 Australian dollars and you'll be ready to take that exam absolutely 100%. Hopefully this was helpful. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see any more content like this. If there's anything in specific you're struggling with, I'll do my best to make a video on that. So any specific questions, let me know. Don't forget to uh, wait. No, I, I think if I ask you to do too many things, you won't do any of them. So just do that. Leave me a comment with a question if you have any. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Okay, see you later.